My interest in Ned Kelly started when I was 10. An old gardener called Tom Main told me the Kelly story and lent me a book, a book in which Ned was a straight-out hero, the police were the villains of the story, uh, it was all wonderful stuff, and I completely believed it. So when I found another book about Ned Kelly a couple of months later, in which Ned was the villain and the police were the heroes, I was a bit surprised. Up to that stage, what I'd read in books was true. So I realized at the age of 10 that if I wanted to find out the truth about Ned Kelly, I'd really have to find it out for myself. So 54 years later, I published my biography of Ned Kelly. And Four I'm suits still of body armor learning. for a climactic battle with police. Each suit weighed between 90 and 100 pounds making swift movement difficult and riding a horse virtually impossible. out over Burns Gully here. This is Burns Gully running down into the wool shed and lined up on the other side of Reedy Creek is Chapel's Gully. The burn place was just over at the edge of the trees, almost on the banks of the creek. And Joe and his family, they're always trekking up and down here um, following cattle. And this whole area was virtually a playground for young Joe and Aaron from the time they were kids, from the time they first met. Um... Aaron Sherritt's brother, Bill, had told him that Joe and Aaron had a, a corner of Burns' It's widely considered that Aaron's role was more in favour of protecting the gang and hoodwinking because... the police, yet he was finally and probably wrongly denounced as a traitor by the gang and their sympathizers. It was about six o'clock when he heard the voice from outside his hut. It's Anton Wicks and I've lost my way. Aaron opened the door to give directions. Joe Byrne, his close lifelong friend, appeared out of the dark and shot him dead. The terrified police would not emerge to make an official report from the until time midday the Sunday. Kelly siege was this railway platform. Everything else is gone. Looking around, it's, it's hard to believe what happened here, and even harder to believe that this could have become the centre of a Republican movement. The ifs are fascinating. If Turno hadn't stopped the train, or if Ned Kelly hadn't turned back his sympathisers at the start of the siege, it could have succeeded. There could have been a Republic of Northeastern Victoria, which would have I believe, going terrific support. The police probably wouldn't have been able to handle it. Militias might have been called in from neighboring towns. Eventually, it's conceivable that Imperial troops would have had to return to Australia. And you could have had something on the scale of a Boer War. A Boer War fought in the bush of the Northeastern Ranges. A frightening prospect. If those things hadn't happened, one of the most fascinating ifs of Australian history.